Hi, my name is Keith Cooper from North Flight Images and in this short video I'm just going to discuss a matter I get asked quite often. It's about setting up monitors, about profiling, calibrating monitors. Um, I'm going to have a look at using this. This is a BenQ SW2700 monitor. It's a wide gamut monitor. Um, I'm not going to use the uh, BenQ software for this. I'll show you um, some software you're more likely to use, which is i1 Profile from X-Rite. This is the i1 Display uh, Calibrator. Uh, it's a colorimeter. It measures uh, light. And the software works by flashing a load of colours on the screen, measuring them of this thing, doing some stuff and coming up with a profile and calibration for your monitor. Now, I use the terms calibration and profiling because they are two distinctly different things. Calibration is setting your uh, monitor to a specific settings. So in this instance, this monitor is set to quite a low colour temperature. D50, which in normal lighting will look quite yellowy colour. Normally you might set it to D65, which is a general use, general purpose. D50 is quite a specific thing. Um, it's used in print sometimes, but I've set it to D50 here because it more closely matches the white balance that I've got set for the camera that I'm shooting this video on. It means that this doesn't look completely wrong colour. If I had this set to D65, which is what I normally edit at, um, this would look quite blue, um, as you can see possibly by this MacBook display next to it, which is set to D65, and certainly doesn't look neutral grey, which I know the desktop is set to on it. But anyway, why am I going to do this? I calibrate it to a particular setting, so a particular brightness. I then profile the monitor, and the profile is what software on the computer uses to be able to display colour accurately. So the profile lets the software do its work. Calibration is just setting the monitor to a known situation. Now this test image, which I'm, I use one of several I use, um, covers a very wide range of colour. Um, this will show up deficiencies in uh, print setups very easily. It's designed specially for it. I've got other ones on the Northlight website, some, some of which you can actually download to use, and there are instructions about using them and what to look for. Uh, similarly, I have test images for black and white as well. Black and white does also need colour management, but um, let's go back to the calibration of this. What settings do I want? For normal use, um, this is a wide gamut monitor, so this has a gamut or range of colours it can cover, virtually up to the full range of Adobe 98. Now, Adobe 98 is a colour space, which is a, a range of colours, which is good for editing if you're doing print. Some people might want to use a larger one. I'm, I'm not here. Um, if you were doing predominantly web work and you weren't printing or anything like that, then you might want to work in a smaller colour space, sRGB. Now, note you can work in sRGB on an Adobe 98 monitor because the sRGB colours are a subset of what the monitor can display. Um, they may not look as bright and vivid as you get on, say, your laptop display or something like that, but that's, they're much more accurate on a display like this. Um, certainly they are once you've calibrated and profiled it. But anyway, here is i1 profiler. I've called it up and it's detected the device here. Now I'm going to just do basic settings here. I've selected profiling. It offers me a whole lot of settings and this is where people get confused sometimes. And what I would say is that if you don't understand the purpose for changing something on, a, on one of the settings, take that as a strong hint that you don't need to. So the defaults are usually pretty good. So in this instance, now the display here shows both screens. 
it identifies this monitor and it identifies this display on the laptop. Now I do calibrate the laptop as well, but laptop screens are not great for editing. If you don't like the contrast on the laptop screen, all you have to do is change the angle you're viewing it and the brightness of the screen will change. Um, that's not conducive to good accurate editing. If you need to use a laptop for editing, you really should get an external display for it. But anyway, here we go. This is set for this. Uh, white point is set for D65. That's a relatively cool white. Um, it's a fairly standard for monitors and um, it's worth, the, if you're doing photography, edit at that. Now, it turns out I've got this monitor set for D50. D50 is a warmer color and is sometimes used because it gives a better match in lighting between screen and print. But I'll come back to screen and print matching and soft proofing and all that other sort of stuff um, some other time. This is really just about setting up the monitor. Because I've set the monitor, which is a hardware profile monitor, you get that with good monitors. But because I've set that, I'll set this at D50. I'd say this is quite a specialised one, but it's exactly the same if I were doing it with D65. 120 candelas per metre squared, that's the brightness of the display. That's reasonable for these conditions, although I edit my office, it's much darker, one of the reasons I don't film there, it, I would have that set at 100. If you find consistently that your prints come out too dark compared to your screen, the most likely cause I've ever come across on this is that you've got your screen too bright. And this is where you set the brightness and set it for um, 100 rather than 120. It'll, you'll need to work in dimmer conditions. Um, having a dim screen and bright lighting just looks like a dim screen. Having a dim screen and dim lighting, the screen looks a lot brighter because our, um, our eyesight adapts to it. But anyway, I don't need to change anything else. The gamma is standard. If you know what gamma is, you'll know why 2.2 is standard. If you don't, just accept that's the standard that everything's set to. As I say, if, there's nothing wrong about finding out what all these settings do. In fact, I'd say you'll probably learn things about color management if you do discover it. But don't think that you need to understand them to be able to use the software. And there are simple modes of working in some bits of software as opposed to uh, more complex ones. So if I go back and change it to the basic mode, display profiling, less settings, still I can set it to D50. And there are little explanations at the side here which help as well. There we go. I've set that D50 at 120, which will do for this room here. These are the colours that are going to be displayed on the screen and are going to be measured by this device. I don't need to do anything here. I've plugged the device in. I like to start measurement. Now, one of the things this monitor's got a hood. This monitor has a hood, which is quite useful for uh, shielding. It does mean there's a little slot in the top here where I can put in that. We'll just put that there. I've turned this round so that the lens is uncovered by the cover here. Put that there. If you tilt the screen back a little bit, the weight will just hold it in place. There's a counterweight on the wire as well, so uh, that will stop it from dropping down. But anyway, here we go. Now, First of all, with this screen, uh, it's uh, manually setting the brightness. Uh, most screens you won't need to manually set the brightness. 
Um, I don't want the software messing with the settings I've got on this, so I'm using it. It tells me that uh, we're aiming for a brightness of 120, and we've got a brightness of 120. That's because I've used the hardware calibration on this screen to set it to 120 before. Oh, different screens have different ways of doing this. You may need to alter the brightness. You may have the software itself may even take care of this. But anyway, we're ready to go. screen is now running through a set of coloured patches. You can see the brightness changing here. Every step of brightness here is being measured by the colorimeter here. The data from that is what's going to be used to build the profile. So it goes through red, then goes through green. So obviously next one after this we'll expect it to step through blue. And then it will do through, run through combinations of reds and blues and greens and also grayscale. So here are the blues. And here's the grayscale. I would note that calibrating profiling your monitor is important to do even if you only ever want to work on black and white uh, because it not only adjusts the colours, it also adjusts the tonal balance to give you a nice even grayscale. Uh, if you don't set up your monitor properly, you may not, you may find that um, dark colours are crunched together or there's a loss of detail in light areas um, on the screen. You want the screen to be correct and when the screen is correct that means the chances of your prints coming out okay are much higher. Now this process takes a few minutes. Uh, there's uh, near 120 patches, 120 um, so it's about a second a piece. Once it's run through all the different patches, the software will go and do its calculations. People are asking me, how often should I reprofile your monitor or recalibrate your monitor? With a good monitor, um, if you're not doing absolute colour critical work, then there's nothing wrong with only doing it once a month. Uh, modern monitors actually are very good, they're very stable. Uh, the idea of needing to profile your monitor every week comes from when we had huge, great, big CRT-based monitors and they drifted, they drifted when they were warm. I should note, perhaps, that even with a monitor like this that uh, doesn't need to warm up or anything, the electronics does need to stabilise a bit. So it's much better if you can with a, a monitor like this to leave it running for at least 10-20 minutes before you do the profiling, the calibration. Uh, it just makes for consistency. They are minuscule changes but most monitors have a little bit of initial drift just when they're first switched on from cold and they very quickly stabilise. This has uh, verified the colours and uh, it's finished the process. So we can take this off. Now, I know that some software has features that you leave the device out and it gives you ambient light monitoring and it changes things when the lighting changes. I'm going to say that such features are entirely marketing led and have no real place in a uh, colour managed workflow. Uh, you do not want the screen randomly changing just because the sun comes out from behind a cloud outside, the room brightness changes, I do not want my monitor changing. Um, if you're working in conditions like that, well, ideally you shouldn't be. You should uh, avoid light changes when you're doing editing work. But uh, you do not leave things running. Uh, it's an option. Um, it looks good. Um, as I say, it has no conceivable use to me other than uh, a feature for selling. But there you go. Uh, I, I should know, obviously, I don't sell kit, so um, there you go. And there we are. The monitor is now set. Um, I can't really show on a video whether it's any better or any worse, um, but it's been set now to uh, whatever the settings were on it. But 
the whole point is I can now work confidently. I can unplug this device, um, keep it in a drawer, uh, look after them. Uh, they will last for years, but don't just chuck it in a camera bag or something like that. Uh, keep it somewhere dark out the way. Um, they're not that delicate, but they don't like being bounced around. They are quite precision bits of equipment, even though they look relatively simple. So there you have it. Um, that's a calibrated a monitor. Um, I can now be more confident in how the system will look uh, and how my editing will work. So hope that's of some help. Um, I'm going to be doing some more uh, short videos on aspects of colour management. I've done a few already. done lots connected with printing. But um, if you've got any questions, please do ask. Also suggestions for anything else you'd like to know about, about colour management. Um, I've got lots of things I'm going to be trying, but obviously, um, yeah, suggestions are always welcome. So uh, if you found this useful, please do subscribe to the channel. And um, thank you very much.